This is a tutorial on one-sided limits. Now in order to get a better understanding of this concept, we're going to take a look at a few example graphs. So let's start with the first one. So here we have a graph of our function f of x. Now let's say we want to find the limit of our function as x approaches 2. And specifically, we want to find the limit of our function as x approaches 2 from the left, which is signified by this negative sign, meaning that we're coming from the negative x-axis direction. So when we do that, we could trace our function coming from the negative x-axis and going towards our x value of 2. Now when we do that, we approach this spot right here. So the limit of our function as x approaches 2 from the left side is negative 1. Now what if we were asked to find the limit of our function as x approaches 2 from the right side, which is signified by this positive sign right here, indicating that we're coming from the positive x-axis. Well, to do that, we'll start from our positive x-axis, which is on the right side, and we'll approach our x value of 2. And again, we'll approach this spot right here, where the output of our function looks like it's close to negative 1. So from that, we know that the limit of our function as x approaches 2 from the right side is also negative 1. Now the purpose of knowing our two one-sided limits for our function is that if they both have an equal value, we know that our function overall will have a limit as x approaches that input value in this case being 2. And that limit will be the same value as our one-sided limits, in this case being negative 1. Now one more part we're going to look at at this graph is to find out what the output is when our input is 2. Well, when we take a look at the graph of our function and go to our x value of 2, we'll see that the output is negative 1. Now the reason that we're looking at all these aspects of our graph is because it helps us to determine continuity at a certain point on our function. And the concept of continuity is vital in future aspects of calculus. Now in order to determine if a function is continuous at a certain point, for example with us at the x value of 2, then our one-sided limits need to be the same value as well as the output of our function at that same x value. Again, for us, our x value will be 2. Now our output is negative 1 as well. Since our one-sided limits, as x approaches 2, are the same value, and are also the same value of our output when x equals 2, we could say that the function is continuous at x equals 2. Now let's take a look at another example. This time we have a graph of the function g of x. And we'll want to answer similar questions as we did with our first example. So first of all, what's the limit of our function as x approaches 3 from the left side? Well, as we come from the negative x-axis and approach x equals 3, we'll come to this area right here, which is roughly a value of 4. So from that, we could say that the limit of our function as x approaches 3 from the left is 4. Now what about the limit of our function as x approaches 3 from the right side? Well, if we come from the positive x direction and trace our function towards x equals 3, we'll come up to this same area again, 
So the limit of our function as x approaches 3 from the right side is also 4. Now based on this, since our two one-sided limits were the exact same value, we could say that the limit of our function as x approaches 3 is also 4. Next, we want to determine the output of our function when the input is 3. So when we go to our x value of 3, we can see that the output is right here, which gives us a value of 2. Now at this point, we want to determine if the function is continuous at x equals 3. Well, remember, in order for it to be continuous, our one-sided limits as x approaches 3 need to be the same, and they also need to be the same as our output when x equals 3. Well, in this case, our output is 2, which is not the same thing as our one-sided limits. So in this case, we would say that our function is not continuous at x equals 3. Now that we know that, let's take a look at just one more example. This time, we have a graph of the function h of x. And just like with the previous examples, we want to start off by finding the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2 this time, coming from the left direction. So when we do that, we'll come from our negative x side and approach the x value of negative 2, which gets us to this area right here, close to the output value of negative 5. So from this, we could say that the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2 from the left side is negative 5. Now let's determine the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2 from the right side. So now this time, we'll come from the positive x-axis and head towards our x value of negative 2, which brings us to this area right here or close to the output value of 3. So based on that, we know that the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2 from the right side is positive 3. Now based on these two limits, we could say that the limit of our function as x approaches negative 2 does not exist. Because in order for a limit to exist as x approaches that x value, our two one-sided limits would need to be the same, which in this case, they're not. Now real quick, let's evaluate our function when the input is negative 2. Well, when we go to our x value of negative 2, we can see that the output is right here at negative 5, because that's where our closed circle is. So the output of our function at x equals negative 2 is negative 5. Now at this point, let's determine if the function is continuous at x equals negative 2. Well, in order for it to be continuous, our two one-sided limits need to be the same value, which we already know that they aren't. So right there, we could safely say that our function is not continuous at x equals negative 2. Now that we've done all three of these examples, let's take a look at each of them side by side. Now that we can see each example side by side and whether they're continuous or not, you may be able to recognize a pattern. For example, with our first graph, we have a curve that just flows throughout the whole thing with no sorts of stops or breaks and it's recognized as being a continuous function. But for our second graph, we also have a pretty fluid line that flows until we get to this breaking point right here, where there's a hole in the graph. Now because of that hole in the graph, our function is not continuous. And more specifically, it's not continuous at that point where x equals 3. Now similarly, with our third graph, it has two lines that flow pretty well 
with no breaks until you get to this point where x equals negative 2. Then you have this nice huge gap between them and they suddenly stop at those two points as well, which also causes the function to not be continuous. So if you want to be able to determine whether a function is continuous or not, just by looking at the graph, you could just see if there are any sorts of breaks or gaps. And if there aren't any, like in example one, then it's continuous. Another guideline you could use is that if you could draw the graph of your function without picking up your pencil, then it's continuous, provided that the curve that you drew is a function. But if you have to draw the graph with picking up your pencil, like with example two here, in order to draw this whole, as well as the function's output at x equals three, then it's not continuous. Same thing with our third example. We could draw this part of our function, but then we have to pick up our pencil in order to draw the other part of it. So that function is not continuous. And that wraps up our tutorial on one-sided limits and continuous functions.